Hey everybody, good morning. Uh, welcome to, uh, to DevNet. If it's your first time in DevNet, I hope you um, get a chance to kind of walk over and see the cloud zone, which is just a couple of pods over. Um, and this is a, kind of an exciting um, time for us. We have some announcements coming out later today that we, we may not um, be able to talk in detail, but maybe we can give you some hints about them. And um, uh, Fayez and, and Lua are two of my favorite people at Cisco because they, they always are pushing Cisco and Not pushing us to move. Didn't we hire him? Yeah, I think we hired him. <laughs> and they did help hire me too, which, which does, does matter, right? That is important. Um, so the, you know, what's interesting about, about inter-cloud and what we're doing in the cloud, and so this is kind of a, a chance to have some discussion with, with two of the leaders in Cisco and trying to help us move into this cloud world, right, and, and make this transformation from a, I like to call Cisco a box company, right, you know, sell us on the truck, box company to a, we got boxes, but we also know how to manage services and run, run this environment very well as well. And so start thinking of some questions now, because I do want to leave some time for, for questions. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to kind of ask some, 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 some good questions, uh, business or technical questions, they would love both of them. Um, but what, what Cisco is doing is we're kind of on this journey now to build the inter-cloud. And the inter-cloud is sort of like the internet was, you know, back in the 90s. It's, there's a lot of different clouds out there. There's a lot of different technologies that make up those clouds. And you have to really understand those technologies and you have to write your applications sometimes to very specific APIs and very specific um, aspects of those clouds that kind of lock you into that technology or lock you into that cloud. And that's the way it sort of was back in the 90s with, the, with different LAN technology and different network technology. It was very specific to an isolated area. And what Cisco did then was to try to create the internet and build multi-protocol label routing and switching and help move and translate data between different disparate networks and bring everything together over a common network. And that's sort of what the inter-cloud at a high level is trying to do is sort of build that model. And so I wanted to kind of give you guys a chance to introduce yourself and, and in your introduction, if you could maybe start us off with the first question is, what's the value that Cisco is seeing and bringing in, in cloud and in this community? Why do we, what's the business value and what's the technical value that you see Cisco bringing to this, this environment? Why, are we, why do we care? Well, we, we care a lot. So, um, can you guys hear me okay? So much background noise, I can't hear myself. Um, so first, I mean, this is really impressive, I, I, you know, if you have any, any questions or doubts in your mind, even for me, uh, that are we serious about developers, I, I hope you get a good sense that we are very serious about developers. Um, and I just got some stats this morning. So 3,000 people have gone through here or the classes in the last three days. Yeah. And 900 people have kind of finished the labs. Correct. So this is amazing. So, so that's, that's great to hear. But back to your question. Um, clearly for us, uh, Intercloud has been a journey. Uh, we've been in the cloud business, cloud enablement, enablement business for a long time. Uh, I've been part of that starting in 2000 when we were on Diamo and then we did Nueva with the servers and so VC. So we've been selling and building, building clouds for a long time. But the, fo the focus for us really in, in, in driving this is that if you put the customer lens on, the customers are going to be living in a world of many clouds. Right? So it's not about any one cloud. People always ask me, what's the best What's the best cloud that I should be using? It's, it's not about any one cloud. The customers are going to be living in a world of many clouds. And you're going to be running your own cloud on-prem and running workloads from there. You're going to be running stuff in our inter-cloud as it makes sense based on the workloads that we serve up around our differentiation, stuff in Amazon, Azure, other places. So how do we make this world of many clouds real? So it's really about a hybrid cloud strategy and at the you know, the first and the foremost part of the strategy is about building out a hybrid cloud capability so that our customers can really navigate through that world of many clouds in a very secure fashion with policy. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, on top of that, is how do we drive our differentiation? So clearly we have a lot of differentiation as, as it relates to the network enabled features of the cloud. Uh, you'll hear us talk about things like NFV and cloud VPN and ACI, lots of different things we're doing uh, from a technology perspective. The other, other big focus on top of the cloud is around Cisco SaaS offers. So Cisco is very, very focused on offerings in mobility, offerings in collaboration, things like Spark, WebEx, hopefully things you use. 
uh, in IOE, you know, lots of demos going on around IOE. So it's about the things that run from the cloud that are highly differentiated for us, right? And it's about that intersection of cloud and apps, our apps, and developers that want to come on the apps, ISVs, and enable new apps on top of those apps that you're building, right? So it's really about the confluence of those three, three things for us in enabling the intercloud. So Luke, tell us a little bit about the technologies. He, he's the man who, behind the scenes, makes it all happen. Right. Yeah, well actually it's interesting, because about, when I joined Cisco about four and a half years ago, as CTO of cloud computing, uh, the big question was, what was Cisco going to be doing in cloud computing? Uh, obviously, we are a arms merchant in that. We sell routers and switches and computers and storage uh, to people who are building clouds. Um, but in many ways, I think that we saw an opportunity when there was an open source project called OpenStack that began about four and a half years ago, where we saw an opportunity to contribute directly into the evolution of cloud computing, because we want to do more than what you see at Amazon today. Uh, or what you see even at Azure. Even though we have, have partnerships, we have a lot of customers who are asking, as Piaz was saying, there's all these different clouds, what, what special value can Cisco bring into this? So we decided to do two things, one of which is we joined the community, and we've been contributing an awful lot of the networking knowledge that we have into OpenStack, so that OpenStack, as an open source set of projects, works best on Cisco and that we're bringing things most recently in this last year around IPv6 into OpenStack. We, we are the primary movers behind the service called Neutron, which brings networking to allow tenants to create their own virtual networks in the cloud. Uh, and then we also have been integrating a lot more of Cisco technologies, such as ASRs and carrier grade kind of, 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 of um, equipment that we can bring in to allow OpenStack to scale. About a year and a half ago, I think it was, that we embarked really on then the inner cloud. Because looking at, Ken had said like, well look at what happens in the internet. What's the analogy in cloud computing? And the analogy is that you really want to have a set of clouds working on a global basis so that the global 500 companies can have a relationship with a cloud provider and be able to reach the entire world through different partnerships that we can have around the globe. These are Cisco powered. They're based on OpenStack. We create these nodes and become now a federation of clouds to allow the, the movement of workloads between the different parts of the globe and that it's all based upon Cisco technology and backed by Cisco. So this way we give our customers the options to deploy clouds on premise. We've been working for the last four years, as you know, like with Comcast and others, building up their cloud service. We recently have been talking about Cisco's private cloud which is if you don't have the resources to go and build your own private cloud, we will build it for you, operate it for you on premise behind your firewall. That means you can be up and running in a matter of days with a cloud, OpenStack cloud, on premise. That then ties back into what we're doing in the inner cloud so that when you then are working on a private cloud and you have workloads or a peak demand and you want to burst, you can easily now burst your workloads into our inner cloud and take advantage to all of the SaaS services that we're bringing out there as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a strategy that's all encompassing in terms of what we see the market and our customers are looking for today to get out of cloud computing. And, and the important thing is open, right? So the, the reason that we are really driving open and open stack is not because we are in love with that technology, but it's- Yes we are. Yeah. Because it's Some, of because it's Some of us are. Some of us are. Because, because, because it's open. Because it's open. And, and the, the, the last thing we want is a world of three clouds, right? <laughs> we want to make sure that right. it's really a world of many clouds, but if they're open, just like what Cisco did when I started the company back in 92, it was all about taking those multi-protocol routers, SNA, DECnet, Apple Talk, over to IP, right? Yep. And that's what we did. Think about we are in the same kind of place in a, with, with cloud now, is how do we drive this notion of open, right? And that's why OpenStack is so important because if we are successful in driving this notion of open, it allows us to kind of connect all these disparate clouds into a cloud area network, effectively, right? With an open protocol that can serve up many, many more services, right? So I think that's, that's really what is important for us, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. 
So that's that's perfect. The question I get asked a lot by by people I work with and meet work with in the community is, so what is Cisco investing in cloud, right? How you know you, we made an announcement of one billion dollar investment, and there's that money side, but just in terms of, of people, right? We we talked about routers and switches. We have people on Lou's team and on your team that are not building a product like a mm -hmm. router or a switch, mm -hmm. but are investing in developing a service and, a, and, and enhancements to a project and projects. And so talk a little bit about what the investment is. You, you don't have to talk about dollars, but just sure, sure. in general, what's our investment in, in services and in, in engineering to do a cloud solution? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, I mean, I think for us, um this is a very big investment, and not just in terms of dollars, which we've communicated, but it's a, it's a transformation for the company. And the, the commitment across the company to drive this, which is, when I took this on a year and a half ago, instituted Lou, um, my partner in crime, and G, and a couple other folks, is how do we drive consistency across the board, first and foremost, because we said, we want to make sure, A, we're driving open, so we got to have consistent APIs across the company and all the products we build. And Luke touched on a bit, but it was about not just the things we're going to build from a cloud perspective, but all the products that we're going to, we're going to consume, our customers are going to consume, we got to make sure that they're, they provide open APIs and they're consistent. So getting, making the investments across all of those BEs to make sure, and you'll hear this across the board, whether you talk to Sony and ACI or an ASR or any, everybody's going to have an open stack strategy from the product, right? And that's, that's about being very, very uh, open and, and, and clear and consistent about the APIs we want to provide. So, so that was at the, at the base infra level. The second thing for us was to really build out the cloud teams to start putting the inter-cloud piece together. Um, now again, a strategy was hybrid cloud, right? So um, I built up a team, Ken clearly is, is the CTO of our, of our team, Alou's built up a team, um, and we've got over now, what, what, 500 people just on our yeah, teams yeah. focused on the OpenStack side of the house, driving this day in, day out, around building out the, the inter-cloud piece of the puzzle. And for, for us, it was really about bringing new talent. So 50% of the talent that in my team comes from the outside. It's folks that are coming from, you know, guys like Ken who understand software, understand DevOps, understand. Mm -hmm. So when people say, well, you know, Cisco is a box company, what do we know? Well, we may, I may not know a lot about it, but we've got you know, very smart people that have come in from the outside now that are helping us build this, right? So there's a big commitment there. And then we've made acquisitions. Um, we acquired MetaCloud six months ago, to, which is a great acquisition for us to provide the um, OpenStack as a service on-prem, hybrid piece, right? And then last week, we announced the acquisition of Piston to bring in more expertise to drive the whole cloud automation piece. So we're, we're really serious about this. You're going to see us heavily invest in this area, um, and hopefully you, you're reading about it in the press and, and you're making all the right moves. So we'd love your feedback on that as well. Lou? Yeah, it, well, actually what's surprising is to see how OpenStack has moved throughout almost all aspects of Cisco. All, most of the different product groups now are looking, they are building on top of OpenStack. Because the world's changed, even from, if you look at something like Meraki, now we are managing things from the cloud. Security products are moving to be able to be managed from the cloud. Our collaboration suite has always been delivered from the cloud. That's now moving into inner cloud and be run from there. But it goes even beyond that. If we look at our video business, transcoders, encoding, we have a V2B, which is actually a video pipeline processing that is running on the cloud. So it can be deployed in different areas. We're doing that with mobile packet core. We're doing it with network function virtualization. So now within Cisco, there's probably a dozen other product teams that are coming out with products based on OpenStack to be deployed either on inner cloud or deployed then on premise as well. So by moving to a cloud model, we, we increase the reach of those products and we make it easier for the customer to consume. Great. So if I had you kind of touch briefly on public, private, hybrid cloud, right? And the a lot of people get confused by the term cloud. And so I, I, I know one of the things you and I talked about, you really want to kind of describe what our strategy at Cisco is around public, private, and hybrid. How, how Cisco kind of thinks about this evolution and this, and the different ways you can use your services in a cloud environment. It's a, it's a good question. I mean, we think, think of it as a continuum, right? So again, from the lens of a customer, <clears throat> cloud is a delivery vehicle. 
That's all it is, right? It's, it's really about what customers care about is consuming the right services from the right cloud with the right level of security and policy that needs to apply to their organization. That's, that's all they care about, right? So all this great technology that we have is an enabler for, for that. So as we think about this problem statement, it's, uh, uh, this goes back to the, the first statement I met, I, I said about the world of many clouds, right? So if you're a customer on-prem, you will have your own cloud. And there'll be good reasons why, for compliance, for um, performance, for other reasons that you're going to run certain things on-prem. There are going to be certain things you're going to run from the cloud. There are going to be certain things you're just going to consume as a service, uh, like a SaaS service, whether it's WebEx, or IronPort, or ScanSafe. You're not going to be building it, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud. But you want to be able to bring all these things uh, into your catalog or your e-store on-prem and serve it up to your customers with your compliance and policy. So that's the problem statement that we're trying to solve. So if you think about what we're doing, providing options on-prem, whether it's a FlexPod, vBlock, whether it's on VMware, Azure, OpenStack, right? So it's customer choice, all the options, with a unified catalog on top, which is a prime services catalog that you hear us talking about. And then how do you connect that up with a set of technologies we call intercloud fabric, which allows you to provide that hybrid nature and, and effectively extend your enterprise into intercloud, other clouds, but with security and policy. You can go natively into clouds, and when you do that, it's not your security policy that takes precedence, right? You lose control. So we've got a set of technology called intercloud fabric that allows you to extend that into public clouds. So that's very important for our customers, so because they can extend the policy. So that's very important for us. And then, of course, we're building our, our cloud as well, and our intercloud, to offer up Cisco's SaaS, Cisco's differentiated assets in IOE, in mobility, in security, in collaboration, right, that we stand up from this cloud. But again, we're going to allow customers to connect into other public clouds as well, like intercloud fabric. In fact, that's launched this week, connects into a phase one connected into AWS, that connects into Azure, it connects into, of course, our own clouds or OpenStack as well. So it's always going to be about customer choice, it's always going to be about you know, bringing those things together. So for us, it's about hybrid, it's about you know, security and policy, and it's about the mobility, about being able to move between these, these world of many clouds and consume them, right? But at the end of the day, it's about the services on top. And how do we enable those services for our customer? Because that's what they care about. So hopefully, that, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. I, Anyone I, I also comment? Yeah, that <clears throat> I think the the inner cloud concept that we're going after here really addresses, I think, what Fires was talking about. This we are going to see lots of clouds in lots of different places in lots of different use cases. And from an application developer point of view, the cloud, the, I call it a cloud computing platform, when you're building to a set of services, which is a compute service, storage service, database service, network service, you're building to that platform. That's a new application design pattern that we're seeing. The deployment model, though, can be varied. It can be deployed in any one of these different clouds. What was always missing before we started exploring this intercloud notion was, what does it mean for those things to now be connected? And for example, in a retail store, if you want to be able to deploy applications right there in the retail store, it's best to think of that as being a node in your cloud, in your company's cloud. Your cloud might be spread over across two or 300 different, different kiosks or retail stores that you have out there. Uh, you might be a global business and want to be able to have all of your different subsidiaries working in the same cloud, and that's what InterCloud we're able to start allowing you to do. As we move forward into IoT, it's only going to get even bigger. The edge is moving further out, that a lot of the information is going to be having to stay at the edge because of the quantity of information. You will have to do computing at the edge. Think of that, and some people call that a fog, a low-lying cloud. You know, the cloud analogies, I'm getting very overworked. But in terms of it being a very large-scale distributed system that is thought of as a platform for applications, and with our inner cloud notion, we're seeing that the networking, the connectivity between that is what really has to be solved next. So as we evolve cloud computing from just what was running at AWS or just what was running in a single data center to this larger notion of inner cloud, we want to have the common platform across there and start enabling those SaaS applications 
so that you don't even care where your app's coming from. You're getting it across the internet from the cloud, even though it may be served to you from, from hundreds of different places. So Lou, Lou didn't mention this, but he and I both are kind of imported into Cisco as, as app guys that right. lots of high distributed um, de application development and high performance computing mm -hmm. stuff. And mm -hmm. so, so I just want Lou to go a little bit deeper on this because I think one thing that I, I always, people ask me, what, what is the biggest issue that OpenStack faces? And in my mind, the application developers don't know how to use it, right? They don't know what they should do to get involved in developing applications that can take yeah. advantage of that, uh, that compute platform or that OpenStack platform. So talk yeah. a little about how, well, how would a developer get involved and, and what should developers you know, be doing? It, it, sometimes it's looked at sometimes being rather a scary thing. You hear Netflix and the scale which these things, they, when you hear other developers say, oh, I don't even care if my, my virtual machine disappears, my app just keeps on running. And you go, how is that possible? It is completely possible. In many ways, the way new applications are being built, we can call them cloud native or whatever, they have resiliency built in at the application level because what we've learned in cloud computing so far, you cannot count on the infrastructure always being there 100% of the time. You have to live through failures. So you design for failures. Fortunately, most of the design patterns the, the internet's a wonderful education tour. You can see how Netflix has been designed. You can see there how they've designed applications that can continue to serve videos to, to millions of customers even though their virtual machines are going up and down. In fact, they're running something called Chaos Monkey, which is another process that goes around and purposefully kills virtual machines in their environment. Just so that they know if that happens by an accident, they can withstand that because they withstand that every day, every hour. That allows that the new application paradigm is building resiliency, building orchestration, building monitoring, building metering into your application layer. Don't expect to get that from somebody else. You need to have that. So there's a lot of tools that you're going to see coming out actually uh, from what we're doing in InterCloud that allow you to build those applications, application assurance kind of tools that'll help you build those new style applications. Perfect. And then, Fayez, just kind of on that same point, maybe from an ISV or a partner standpoint, <clears throat> what, what should, what's some advice you would give to, to ISVs and partners on how they could start working with, with InterCloud and the Cisco Cloud capabilities built on OpenStack? Yeah, look, you know, I mean, that's, that's a big, exciting journey for us, and um, I'm, I'm personally very excited because I'm, I'm seeing some of that in, in action here. So if you do get a chance, please uh, go next door. I learned a few things yesterday myself. But for, for us, it's about the confluence of the, the, the networking pieces, the SaaS, what we call the network-enabled apps. Collaboration is a great example of that. So, and then the, the APIs to enable it to create net new things. And in this new world of cloud, you don't have to build everything yourself. So I could be a developer that uh, wants to take a certain application and make it collaboration rich. So I don't have to recode that and, and code the collaboration app myself. I can just go with a few APIs and get a collaboration app from the cloud and connect it into my app workflow, right? We want to enable that, as an example. Or if I'm a developer, in fact, we are living this here today. I don't know if you've, many of you have seen this between screens here and downstairs. We have our CMX app running, which gives you uh, location information. And based on your cell phones, as you walk around, they know who's where. And clearly, if you were authenticated, we know who you are and what you're seeing, what you're doing, right? It's great for retail, it's great for the... So again, our ISVs are going to be developing these kinds of apps. And that's a network-enabled app. So I'm just giving you a couple of examples, but you know, there's just many, 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 many examples of things we can go do. And that's what we want to enable with InterCloud and, and with, with DevNet and with, with our apps and our app APIs. So for us, that's a big focus. Um, and you're going to see us just invest. Uh, I mean, this is a three times the size of what we did, with, we did last year. I, I suspect it'll be even bigger next year. But we want to make sure that all of you get a chance to a, they told me that um, even I could be programming in 10 minutes. So. And you guys are much smarter, so make sure you... you it would you, be a nice to you, Fias. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it might take more than 10 minutes for you, okay. but that's... You know, 15 maybe minutes. 15, yeah. So, so make sure that you get a chance to <laughs> see how, you know, how all of this works, but that's, that's what we're driving. 
That's perfect. Um, Lou, one question I know that, that we've talked a little bit about OpenStack in a couple of different conversations, but I think one thing that's important for this audience to, to kind of you know, grasp is just why did Cisco get involved in OpenStack, right? And what has happened since we got involved with OpenStack? Sure, sure. So um, I touched upon some of this earlier, but I think more than anything, when we see we're at the beginning, and we keep going the beginning of this journey, well, we're a continuation of what the journey is that we started back in the internet with TCP IP and everything else, and the same transformation is happening. So we got involved very early in OpenStack itself when OpenStack was just two services. Rackspace had a service called Cloud Files, and they could give you basically Amazon S3 equivalent file storage in the, in the cloud. And then NASA, um, friends of ours there, were developing something called Nova, which was a compute service, very similar to EC2 and Amazon. These decided to open source at the same time, and we started working with those communities, and Cisco was one of the first large IT companies that came in to the OpenStack community. And we said, well, it sounds like you're missing something. Let's see, compute, storage, there must be networking. So we came in with a proposition and joined with 14 other companies, uh, with Intel, NYSERA, Citrix, many other companies to say, let's make compute, storage, and networking, and then add identity and other foundational elements for OpenStack. And that can be then the future of cloud computing. That wasn't being done at Amazon. So we needed to be able to do that through an open source community by doing a lot of contributions. Um, now this last release of OpenStack was over 1,500 developers have been contributing to this. There's over 400 companies that are involved. So we're working with all of those companies. And it's, it's, I think it's a rather interesting time in our industry that we're seeing, in the, in the past, competitors would get together around standards. And we would drive things through IETF, and that's how you would make progress in terms of this. Now we're seeing that people want the code. They really need the implementations of this. So now we're collaborating through open source communities. And this means that those of us that are, that are putting in code get the benefit of everybody else's input. And everybody's reviewing. We're reviewing code uh, contributed by IBM, by HP, by Intel. They're likewise reviewing our code because we feel that the customers want us to stop fighting it out for the marketplace. They want us to agree upon what was previously standards, agree upon these common set of APIs, and then we can better serve them individually what we do in our implementations and the rest of the services that we provide around it. So I think it was, it was really seeing open source, more than anything else, it was a time now for Cisco to really get heavily involved as being contributors. And it's not just OpenStack, Open Daylight. Is, an, is another area where we're very big contributors in terms of defining now a network, software-based network controller called Open Daylight, where again, it's the same model, many of the same companies that are contributing to that technology, and then taking it out into their own products and services. So it's really, I think it's really important, you, you mentioned a couple of things, but if I could just have you go a little bit deeper, Lou, in, in terms of, of two things. One is, is OpenStack is not a product, it's a set of open source projects, and and with that, how important is open source to Cisco, Cisco yeah. strategy? Because a lot of people probably think Cisco and don't think open source, right? They, that's right, that's they, right. Uh, I, th I think, exclusive. and that's why I think it is this big change. So it is clear, OpenStack is a, is a community of people, number one. It's a foundation, and it's a set of open source projects. And those are actually all independent. The open source projects are run it's a technical meritocracy. They elect their own leaders. They design their own development schedules. And they contribute, and it comes out then as open source. Anybody can get that. It's in public GitHub repositories. You can download it. You can play with it. But it is not a product. Open source depends upon companies then taking that and making a product. So you may make a distribution. So we've got Red Hat has a distribution of OpenStack. We've got SUSE. Canonical, HP, other companies that are making distributions. We are bringing this out as a cloud service, which is what our, our inner cloud offering is. And then we're also bringing it out as a service on premise through MetaCloud, through our, our Cisco private cloud. So that's the productization that Cisco is doing around this open source community. 
so that the speed of development, the, the cooperation with the other industry players, we can take advantage of that and bringing it out though as products where, where customers now want to buy it, they want to support it, they want Cisco to stand behind it. This is not just open source stuff that, that they want to get, they want to really get it from a vendor and have it be supported by the vendor. And, and, and it's really proliferating as well. I mean, I was the OpenStack uh, conference in Vancouver, my, my, yep. you know, with, a few weeks ago. And it's amazing to see, I believe there was a thousand people last year, and this year there were 6,500. So it's exponentially growing. Every customer out there is looking at some OpenStack project. Clearly, a lot of them are doing it because they don't want to pay VMware tax anymore, and so they, they're looking at more of more of a open vehicle. But also, as they're building out, looking to build out these cloud, you know, all customers are. You hear this concept of digitization. All customers are looking at digitization, and they, in doing that, they have to build now the new world of applications, which are cloud scale, right? And this is where OpenStack really plays a very important role. And so us kind of working with the big industry partners, because what customers are looking for is companies like Cisco and Red Hat and Intel and others to stand behind it and make it industrial grade, right? So while it's still open, just like IP was, right? It's going to be open, but that they get the right level of support and acceleration so that you know, it proliferates. And that's really what we are standing behind and driving. And you know what I think is also interesting, Ken? We're seeing at the same time as this as OpenStack has been rising up, we've seen software-defined networking coming about. And that's, again, another huge transformation, I think, in the industry, where people are saying they really want software-defined or driven infrastructure. They want to be able to look at their infrastructure and be able to automate it so that they can lower their operating costs, and they want networking to start behaving nicely as software so that they can do that. That way, they can actually start to scale those network applications, they can upgrade them at the speed of software instead of having a truck roll come in and do a new installation of a piece of hardware. So these two things were happening at the same time. Software-defined networking, largely defined by OpenFlow and a lot of new paradigms coming in at the same time as open source cloud computing. And they're coming together in something which is OPNFV. And this is where there's another open source community forming around taking OpenStack, taking Open Daylight, taking the Etsy standards being defined for network function virtualization and bringing them together to make a reference implementation so we can all then start to go to market again, then we productize that. And we productize that and we bring that to market to bring it into the customers. So these different open source movements are starting to come together, I think, and merging around this open source, uh, open daylight, open stack, and a lot of other open source communities. Yeah. Exciting. It's great. So two, this is like your five minute warning for questions. I'm gonna be coming to, to, to questions in about five minutes. So two questions left here. Uh, one, just, um, we, we hear a lot about software disrupting the industries, right? Any industry you're in, you're being disrupted by software. And just from, from when you think about cloud, you think about what, what Cisco's doing with the open source communities, how important is it for this audience to realize how critical adopting open source solutions are? Yeah. I, I think it's absolutely critical, but I would be, um, you have to look at your entire business, I think. There's many things that are going on in your data center, which are just your standard run the business, you've got to be able to do that, you're devoting a lot of resources towards that. We've already gone through virtualization, which I think squeezes a maximum amount of efficiency out of servers, and those are becoming legacy systems. I, if I was, my advice to you is to look for the new parts of your business, the new lines of business that are having to change and are facing the disruptions brought by these competitors coming into your business. You need to make them move faster. You need to help them become more agile. By, and you can do that if you're in the IT organizations by helping them get onto a cloud platform, whether it be on-premise or whether it be in the cloud through intercloud. Getting them on a cloud platform, helping them understand how to do that, will accelerate that business for them. And, and so that's where the new parts of your business are the ones you really should be earmarking, say, we got to go to the cloud, that's the only way. Cloud, the government themselves, we said they had, you know, Vivek Kundra said, we're going to have a cloud first policy. They're going to stop building data centers, they're only going to deploy new applications in the cloud. They're going to move to a cloud model that's the most efficient, most importantly, it's the most agile. And that's why I look for the new parts of your business, and that's where you should focus looking at these services. Yeah, look, I mean, 
I'll just give you a business answer. I mean, when I started Cisco back in 92, and I still remember that, we were, we were a software company then as well, even though when people think about us, they think about routers and switches. Uh, that's a delivery vehicle, right? Meaning a software runs on our, 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 our hardware, but we're really a software company. And we've con continued There's to- There's this thing called iOS. What does that, that's that Apple software, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, they stole our name. Well, Sorry. When is review coming up? <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, you see, we've, and we've continued to move up the stack over the years, right? So if you think about um, right from what we did with iOS and in, in, in embedded switches to now, if you think about all of, all of our acquisitions over the last three or four years, they've been in software. So whether it's in things like mobility or security software, ScanSafe, Ironport, you know, we just launched Spark, WebEx, it just goes on and on and on the list. Um, IOE, the things that we've, we've done with the uh, service grid and composite and medical. So we're clearly continuing to build out that bigger platform. And the reason why that's important is because how customers are going to consume this, and customers being ISVs as well, are they're going to write software, but they're going to write software in, in new and different ways. They need more APIs, whether they're APIs from the network, APIs from, from the cloud, right? to create these net new workflows and, and they could be running in different places. So it's, it's a big, it's, it, for my, in my mind, it's, there's a big technology piece mm -hmm, to it, mm -hmm. but it's also a big business model shift in how you're thinking about where your applications, applications sit, run, and how you develop them, right? So it's not about app running on one a core in your data center. It's a distributed app with pieces running in multiple clouds and, and, and deli being delivered on, on a mobile edge or on a fog edge, right? So I think that's that's the problem statement we're looking at, and that's kind of how we're approaching the problem and trying to solve it. Perfect. And then the, the last question, I know you both wanted to put a plug in for some of the new um, web web presence we have on the developer.cisco.net, uh, developer.com. Yeah, I think actually around here in different places, uh, with the developer.cisco.com, We've got the DevNet sites, and we have actually just launched a OpenStack segment to that, a cloud computing segment, where, for example, all of the plug we developed a lot of plugins slash device drivers, ways for OpenStack to integrate into Cisco infrastructure. Those are all available from that place, as in addition to an awful lot of videos that have been done describing different aspects of OpenStack, videos from conferences as well, pointers again to open source components that are used in different GitHub repositories, technical briefs, everything you need to sort of understand how to use OpenStack, and a lot of the technologies that were then coming out on top of InterCloud will be going out through the same vehicle. So, yeah, I think you can check it out on a lot of the monitors around here. Yeah, so it's uh, developer.cisco.com slash cloud, and that will get you to some of Lou's area, It'll take you to the InterCloud area where you can see some of the OpenStack APIs that are exposed. It'll take you to something we, we've been developing called Project Shipped, which will allow you to kind of get some information about Do what that is. Do look at that. If you're into containers, that's, I think, a very important part, because we're seeing the already cloud computing is changing again. It's moving from virtual machines to containers to using them both together to create these kinds of microservices coming right. out. So definitely an exciting time, uh, probably the most exciting time in our industry, and it's fun to be here. So I'd like to open it up for, for questions. Thank you both. We'll, we'll, I'll come back and thank no, you again, but just want to open thank up. Thank you. And if questions. I could just make one last comment, right? It's um, do spend some time here. I mean, this is a journey for us, and we are investing significantly in making sure that you know, all of our customers are going through this journey with us to cloud. And we want to make sure that we help you, you know, on this journey with us. Um, we have lots of tools. Uh, training, tools like ship and other things, lots of trainings over here. So please make sure that um, you, you spend the time here or outside uh, in working with us to kind of help you on that journey, right? So we're very invested in that um, in getting you there. So I'm sure that it's exciting. Is that exciting for you guys as is, as is for us? So. Yeah. Sorry. Q and A. I was wondering if you guys had a estimation as to what the market size is for AWS versus the VMware solution versus Eucalyptus versus OpenStack, and you know what the size is now for all of those, and what you think the market size is maybe in the future in terms of percentages. You know, it's a, it's a good question. Let me just give you a context. I may not be able to directly answer your question, but if you think about the IT industry, it's about a 1.5 trillion dollar market, right? That's the spend. 
And if you think about Amazon's revenue, it's about six billion. If you combine all the cloud players, it probably adds up to maybe 10, 15 billion, right? So clearly, it's a huge opportunity, right? And we're kind of in the first innings of a nine inning game, right? So it's, it's like only this much has been captured. So customers on this journey to cloud and, and all the things we just talked about. Um, so for us, why open and open stack is so important is because just what happened with the internet, right? If you think about what happened, two things happened. One is when the internet came into fruition, it really allowed everybody to connect in an open way. So anybody could play, right? You don't have to have proprietary systems that IBM SNA had and others had. And then with the advent of the browser, Netscape at the time, it kind of became the window of the internet and opened up the whole e-commerce economy, right? So that's the same exact point where we're at. So open allows us to, everybody to connect into and create this, what I call the global cloud area network, right? And then it's all about the services on top that you want to bring to bear. And you know, we are launching an intercloud marketplace, and it could be any marketplace, but how do we, through that marketplace, bring all these services to bear so that customers can consume? So I think the opportunity is massive. The, and, and today, the people that are capturing it is still very small, right? So. Yeah. And, and I think it also, so that's the total market view, and I think that's about, that, right, that we're seeing that though, that almost every new disruptive company starts in the cloud. That's it's just a given. So when you're looking for, and that's why even in your own businesses, where you, if you were to slice this by how much of new businesses are being created in traditional IT versus cloud, it's just overwhelmingly now already in cloud. So that's the shift that's happening. Hey guys, uh, actually a great follow on to your comments from the last question. So understanding Cisco's cloud strategy and you have the inner cloud fabric, which is the connected tissue between multiple clouds in a world of many clouds. And one of the clouds in that world of many clouds is the inner cloud platform itself. A lot of times when people ask what is inner cloud, the first thing that comes up is uh, OpenStack. But OpenStack's really the plumbing underneath inner cloud. My, my question is what are the services in the roadmap for the inner cloud? So when you look at something like AWS, you've got the compute services, the storage services, the application services, the marketplace. Can you talk a little bit about what the services strategy and roadmap looks like? Well, why, why don't I start and we can go bottoms up? Because at the base of InterCloud, because we are based on OpenStack, you have all of the OpenStack services. So you have your compute service, your storage service, your image service, your block storage service. Your, you know, those, and that continues to grow naturally through the community. And that's the equivalent to the Amazon. Ah, yes. In fact, open source always copies the best. So a lot of that is you, something will come out on Amazon. You'll six months later you'll see it in OpenStack. On top of that, then we're relaying, layering SaaS and business services. And maybe Fiat, you can talk about a few of those that that are then layered on top. Yeah. So the the, the way to think about it, it's a, it's a great question, and also I'll, I'll put in a plug. I mean, do do spend the time if you can to look at the marketplace demo because that kind of is the the window to in the cloud, right? So that's all you need to really, customers need to worry about uh, in terms of consuming services. Also, we, we have a keynote at 1, 1, 1 p.m. We're going to be demoing a lot of these things on stage, so you get a sense for what, what all the services are. Um, but at the end of the day, so what, what we're not, we're not trying to be an AWS, right? We're not trying to be a commodity IS brand. I'm not saying that that's all they do, but that's not what our focus is. Though, if it's going to be a world of many clouds, customers are going to be wanting to consume services depending on what, what makes sense from various clouds. So you may want to consume Office 365 from a Microsoft cloud because it makes sense, right? So when you come to Cisco's inner cloud, which is a combination of clouds, right? It's going to be about Cisco services, right? So all the things like Spark and WebEx and all the things that we make and sell. It's going to be about a lot of our network services um, you heard about NFE services, things like firewalls and CSR and NFE and cloud VPN, all of those things. And then many, many partner-based services will be in there. We're working with Citrix, we're working with F5, lots of other players. But is, as you think about our focus areas, IOE, mobility, collaboration, security, networking, we, so the way we spend our money and the differentiated services around those things, that's the stuff we want to put into the marketplace. And of course, a lot of our partners are building on top of those things. And we want to bring their services into the marketplace that's building on top of that, right? So it's really focused. 
but it's about when customers think of Cisco and the cloud, it'll be this set of differentiated services. Now, of course, these services run on IaaS and they need storage, and as Lou said, we're going to have all of that, but it's not a, you know, here's our cheap IaaS service, that we, that's, that's not the game. And another key thing just to add to that is that the APIs are very important, yes. and so all of the services, like our database as a service, it'll have a 12 API, which is an open source project, right? And so as, as, you, as we roll out big data as a service, database as a service, message queuing as a service, everything as a service, it all has APIs that are based on open source standard APIs. And with that, that's why we're looking, we can accelerate that. So most of the, as you see, the marketplace applications coming out are now built against the OpenStack API so that they can quickly get on building their special service without having to worry about the underlying infrastructure. Uh, Fayez uh, mentioned that uh, a lot of the motivation for people contributing and becoming users of OpenStack is to avoid this VMware tax. Can, can you guys give us at least a high level, what are some of the gaps between OpenStack functionality and VMware functionality? Um, Lou, you want to take it at the technical sure. level and I'll, take, I'll, I'll provide sure. you a business answer. I, I, but I don't think it's a, as, there's a different focus. VMware is primarily still focused on an IT-managed virtualized environment. I mean, they've had several runs of sort of how to make it into, look like a cloud, whereas the cloud-based technologies, either out of Amazon or OpenStack, have always been about a self-service cloud. It's all driven through APIs, and so some of the gaps, I think, actually are around management. VMware has been focused much more on how the IT organization, which is providing these things, it's a trouble ticket driven environment. You say, give me a certain number of VMs, the, the IT department looks at that, spins those up, gives them back to the customer. Whereas the, in the OpenStack world, in the true cloud world, that's done totally self-service. So it's a different focus, I think, more than anything else. And of course, VMware has tons of virtualized mach you know, machine images out there, so a lot of legacy systems out quote legacy, or on VM today. OpenStack, though, as a platform, can manage both KVM and ESXi. So you can actually run a lot of these older VMware applications just fine on OpenStack. And in fact, VMware themselves are is putting OpenStack as kind of a front end now for vCenter and other things. Yeah, We're seeing these things merge. Yeah, I think, I think uh, at a business level, if you see, you know, it's a, it's a paradigm shift between architectures, right? It was, if we talk in terms of scale up, scale out, right? So as you think about VMware, it was <clears throat> around the focus on IT, scale up, a lot of provisions provided, you know, within VMware, right? As you start building applications for the cloud, we are disaggregating the various layers. You don't want to be reliant on any one layer, right? So, because if things go away, you should just be able to... So that's what OpenStack with APIs, everything else provides. So I think it's about, how do we drive this paradigm shift, which OpenStack has, and how do we accelerate the feature velocity, right, so that it becomes easier, industrialized, for our IT customers? How do we drive that adoption? For, for us, that's the big, big focus. So as I think about the business problem behind the technical issue, it's everybody's looking at it, everybody wants it, everybody wants it industrialized today, right? Our customers want it industrialized today. How do we, how do we accelerate that journey? I think that's what we're trying to drive uh, across across the board and working with our partners. Great, well, I want to thank you all for your, your time and attention. Thank you so much. Uh, if I thank Fayez and Lou for, for their time. Thank you, Fayez, thank you, Lou. Thank you for having us. Thank you.